Amen, and good morning, and happy new year to you. Welcome into Forest Park United Methodist Church. Thank you for uh, venturing out today to worship with us on this first Sunday of the new year. Whether you're here or whether you're watching online, we extend warm Christian greetings to you, and again, extend happiest of new year wishes to you. We hope that 2022 has been good to you so far. It's only just uh, this old, but we hope that, it, uh, that it's better than 2021. Amen. And uh, 2021, you got it. It was better than 2020, so maybe we've got a little momentum going. Thanks again for joining us. My name is David Willis. I'm privileged to be the pastor here at Forest Park. I'm going to take just a couple of moments and cover some announcements that you have with you uh, in your bulletin that you picked up this morning. First of all, did everyone get communion elements this morning as you came in? Okay. I don't see any hands going up. We're good there. One of the things I want to point out to you about your bulletin before we hit the announcements is your connection card. Be sure that you fill that out and drop it in either the offering plate that's going to be passed or in one of the white offering baskets that are present at each exit. Uh, Forest Park Student Ministry is coming back strong. They're going to start a confirmation class beginning February 6th and running through April 10th. It's time for students to decide whether they want to confirm uh, that which is dear to their heart, that uh, what is their faith. They're going to discuss the faith and beliefs of the United Methodist Church. They're going to be talking about, uh, they're going to be talking about uh, committing their life to Christ, being baptized. That's generally designed for uh, sixth grade and up. So if you have children or grandchildren that you think might be interested in that, Please be sure to let Faith or Sam, the youth director, know here at church. The other announcements listed there are fairly straightforward. A couple of different things that I want to let you know about. Um, the resumption of Wednesday night dinners will occur on January 12th. Also, our Wednesday night men's Bible study is going to resume on January 12th as well. Then uh, coming up on Saturday, January 22nd from 10 a.m. till really until we get done. It may be noon, it may be 11.30, I just don't know yet. We're going to have an exploring membership class here at Forest Park. If you're a new member at Forest Park or you've been interested in joining or you just had some questions about Forest Park or about the United Methodist Church itself, that will be a great time for you to come up and, and be with us here at the church. Um, I'll be leading that class. We'll have a light breakfast served. We're going to be talking about just a, a tad of the history of the United Methodist Church and talking also about this particular church, about how the church governs itself, the United Methodist Church as a whole, and about some places where you can get plugged in here at Forest Park. It'll be a great time for you to ask me any questions that you have about the beliefs of the United Methodist Church, about how we uh, worship and, and practice our faith here at Forest Park. So if you, uh, again, fit into any of those categories, or if you've been here umpteen dozen years and you're a member and you just... Uh, would like to come and share some time with us. We would be happy to host you coming up again on Saturday, January 22nd, 10 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Again, thanks for being with us this morning. Let's open the new year in our new worship with a word of prayer. Bow with me. To you, God, we give the glory. You are the God of hope, the God of the second chance, the God who um, never pales in comparison to this world. You are always brighter. You are always there with uh, your loving, kind hands to, to lead us and to guide us. And for that, we are eternally grateful. We come to you today to celebrate communion. We come to you today to worship. We come to you today to begin this new year, lifting our hearts to you. As we pause today, may our hearts and our minds be free. May we be ready to serve May we be made ready to be revived. Inhabit our worship and praise. As we give you thanks, Father, may we be blessed and may you be glorified. This is our prayer. We offer it in great faith in Christ's precious name. Amen.
to start worship out this year. Join me now in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Share the word of the Lord with us. Always blessed. And good morning, the second day of a new year. Amen. It's got to be better, doesn't it? Well, I hope so. And to start it the best way we can on our feet is, is our Old Testament reading this morning. It comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 10 through 13, the contemporary English version. Listen to me, you nations, nearby or across the sea. I scattered the people of Israel but I will gather them again. I will protect them like a shepherd guarding a flock. I will rescue them from enemies who could overpower them. My people will will come to Mount Zion and celebrate. Their faces will glow because of my blessings. I'll give them grain, grapes, and olive oil, as well as sheep and cattle. Israel will be prosperous and grow like a garden with plenty of water. Young women and young men, together with the elderly, will celebrate and dance because I will comfort them and turn their sorrow into happiness. Blessed be God's holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gene. Again, let's take time to bow together and pray. Heavenly Father, when we consider the promises that that we've just heard Gene read from your word, we are overcome. When we truly stop and begin to consider what you have said and set it alongside what you've done, we should be filled with awe. Because your word never fails. Your word is true. Like we will discover later and be reminded later, in the beginning was the word. You have given us hope. When you have spoken to us, you have given us your letter of love through Holy Scripture. And in all of those things, we see the very revelation of who you are. In the beginning of this new year for us, we pray that you awaken our hearts to that truth. The past few weeks, Father, we've been talking about taking an Advent journey. Well, Lord, the season of Advent is over. And the season of Christmas is upon us. This season of celebration, this season of your glorification is here. Let us move forward into 2022, not looking back and dreading what we think has the potential to happen. But looking forward 
and knowing that with you, all things are possible. We give you thanks for the blessings that you've poured out upon us over the past few years. It has been a tough time for us, but you are a resilient God, and we are your people. So we yield our lives to you now in 2022, and we seek your blessings upon us, upon this church, and upon our families and community. And we pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit. Today, Lord, as we pray every week, we are reminded of those who are sick, those who are ailing, injured, and hurting this weekend, those who are unable to be with us for whatever reason. We lift them up to you, and we pray for them today for uh, your healing and for your strength to find them, for the lonely, for the hurting, for those, Father, who are trapped in their own mind. We pray that you would make yourself real to them at this hour. There are many who have chosen uh, lines of work that put, them, um, that put them in positions to be heroes. And certainly, Father, we know that just because you put on a uniform or you pin on a badge that, that you're not a hero. But we do know that when you live out your call in this world... Your call to service, whether it is wearing a badge and a uniform, whether it is working in hospitals or working in a grocery store, a life of service will always bear fruit. For those, Father, who have chosen these noble professions today, we give you thanks. We realize that right now they're working, that we can get together and do this with a degree of safety. And we're thankful for that. We ask your blessings upon them. For those who would choose the noble profession of serving in our United States military, those who are far from home today, we ask your blessings as well. And for those who would lead us, we ask, Lord, that you would give them the intestinal fortitude to listen to your direction, that they would yield to your will and lead according to your interest and not their own. Today, Father, as we always do, we ask that you teach us to pray. Just as you taught your disciples when you told them to say this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
may be seated. Before we move into our time of offering today, I wanted to take just a couple of moments and, and share some things with you. First and foremost, thank you for your faithfulness to the church. We ended up the year uh, with uh, December obviously being uh, one of the best months for giving that, that we've had. And, and I'm thankful that, that you heard my plea and I'm thankful that you heard God speak to you. And uh, I just want to say thank you for your support and for your response. We don't know the totals yet, but we'll be happy to share those when we uh, get those in. I, I think we're going to live to fight another day. So uh, thank you very much for your responsiveness. Today we are going to move into our time of offering, passing the offering plates for the first time in almost two years. We're going to have uh, uh, some ushers come forward in just a little bit. And uh, if you are uncomfortable this morning receiving the offering plate, just let it pass you by or take it under the bottom and hand it to the person next to you. And you, you can drop your offering into one of the white baskets that you see by the exit doors. Uh, again, we are going to fire this back up. And what I encourage you to do is get vaccinated if you feel comfortable being vaccinated. Get a booster if you feel comfortable getting a booster. If not, do what you need to do to protect yourself in public. Use good, solid common sense. As a former healthcare professional, let me tell you, this stuff ain't going away. It's not, okay? It's dangerous to some people and not to other people. We don't know why. We will eventually, but we don't know why right now. So, act accordingly. Act with prudence. Act in a way that um, helps you be what you need to be to your brother or your sister. That's the best advice I could give there. This year uh, starts out a new time of leadership here at the church. So I want to pause and thank all of those who are rolling off our committees this year. In the United Methodist Church, if you're on one of the five committees that we have here at the church, you're on for uh, three years. So every year, someone will roll off and three new people or nine new people will come on one of those committees. I want to take some time to thank those who have served this church as volunteers, those who uh, serve our church as staff, and welcome those who are going to serve us in the coming year. Next week, we will have a list of those who are going to be leading our church over the next year. And uh, you will see that on those five committees, we have a, a good swath of folks throughout the church. Both services are well represented, and I thank them for, uh, for their service, uh, for those rolling off, and for those coming on. Now, as we move into this time of giving, I want to take just a couple of moments and, and let you know how appreciative I am uh, for your support, not only of the church, but of me. I'm thankful for your prayers as your pastor, and I'll tell you straight up, I, I covet them. As we move through a difficult time in this community and in this church, let me tell you that uh, your prayers for me and for the staff here at the church are extremely important. And we really, really desire that continued prayer support from you. Thank you for what you do for our church and our community in the name of this church. And thank you for trusting us enough to, to come here and let us minister not to you, but minister with you. Let's pray together. Father, during this time, we give you thanks for the gifts that you give to us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love. We thank you for your peace. Today, we start out the new year by pausing during our worship, not from worship, but to continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Today, Heavenly Father, as we give back just a, a little bit of what you've given to us, may these gifts be multiplied and may your work be done through our giving hearts. Bless the gift, bless the giver today in your name. Amen.
stand for that song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Did you um? Did you overdose on football this weekend? I did. I'll just tell you that's it's straight out of the gate. I love me some football. I love watching football, and and this weekend was a, a good weekend for football. Um, and it's still going. I mean, today we've got some professional football. I, I'm not sure, but I think there may be a maybe a bowl game sometime next week. And then we've got the college football championship coming up. Roll Tide um, next. Uh, uh, um, yeah, somebody, what did somebody say? Go dogs or something? Hey, there you go. Go dogs. All right. Um, we'll see how it shakes out. But I, I love watching football. I love the strategy of it. And, and if you, you are familiar with college football at all, you know the bowl season. The bowl season used to be something unique. It, it's not anymore. Because everybody and their mama has a bowl, um, you know the the cotton ball bowl or you know the toilet bowl or or whatever they have all of these bowl games that that are just silly, and they get these teams that aren't very good to play in them, and you're thinking. Well, you know, it's Tuesday afternoon at, at 4.30, there's a bowl game on, I guess I'll turn over and take a look at it, and because there's nothing else to do, and you just can't watch it. I mean, it's, it's bad. I've seen high school teams play better than some of the college teams that were in bowls this year, and i I be honest with you, sometimes I watch teams like... Uh, the team that's uh, way west of us over on I-10 play sometimes, and I think, wonder, wonder, or east of us, I should say, why? Why can't they play any better than what they do? I'm talking about the Jag Jacksonville Jaguars, if, if you don't know. Um, and uh, it's, it's like they're up and down all the time. So, well, football is a rough game. It's a game of strategy, and, and it's no different today than it used to be. The equipment's different. The, the players are different, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm always reminded of the giant in all of football history, Vince Lombardi. You, you know the name Vince Lombardi. Some of you may know that name. Some of you, you may not know that name. Well, Vince Lombardi was the, the greatest NFL coach of all time. Uh, he was the, the coach of the Green Bay Packers, and th they used to be the terror of the, the midway, the terror of the, uh, the gridiron. It, the Packers were just it, the Packers and the Bears and the Eagles to a degree. And I know you've heard this story before, but I love it, and I think it bears repeating, especially at a time like this. Back in 1961, uh, when the uh, Green Bay Packers returned for spring training, uh, they were coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Philadelphia Eagles the year before uh, and probably <laughs> one of the, the most incredible upsets in NFL history. And so Vince Lombardi gathers those professional players together and he sits them down and he takes a football and he holds it up and he says, gentlemen, this is a football. The object is to take this football and put it in your opponent's end zone to score points. So you, you get the irony, right? He had all of these professionals in there, and he just decided sometimes you need to start from the basics. Sometimes you just need a reminder of who you are and what you are doing in this particular place and in this particular time. I tend to think New Year is a great time to kind of do that for us as a church. I think it's a good time for us to remember 
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, we are the church. And this is Jesus. And this is whom we serve. It's to him that we long to give our lives. And it's to him that we want to draw people toward and let them know and understand the depth and the truth of who he is. That's what we do today. We come together today to be reminded of the most simple elements of who we are in Christ and who Christ is to us. And we do that looking at the Gospel of John. And people ask me all the time, hey, Brother David, you know, I've, I've fallen out of the habit of reading my Bible or I've never read the Bible before on a regular basis in my life. You know my advice. My advice is start with the Gospel of John. John is the most concise, succinct Gospel that there is in all of the Gospels. It does not tell the entire story of his life, but it for you and for me, Gentiles, it is the Gospel that was written for us. And it's a great place to start. And I encourage people to read it as we covered last year in our spiritual discipline sermon series and in a very specific way. You pick your Bible up and you read it on a daily basis until you feel your mind start to wander. And when your mind starts to wander, you close it up and, and you pick it up the next day. Make a little tick in the Bible or something. So you know, some days, if you're like me, you're going to read three or four chapters. And then some days you're going to read three or four sentences. Your mind will start to wonder. And when it starts to wonder, close it up and put it down. It's okay. It will be there tomorrow or Jesus will come back. One of those two things is going to happen. So you're going to be okay. All right? Put it down. Get your mind clear and let it rock on. The Gospel of John, very clear, very concise. Read it, to, read it through three times. Okay? Read it through one time and just absorb it. Read it through the second time and underline things that speak to you. Yes, you can mark in your Bible. Okay, this is your preacher giving you permission to mark in your Bible. Now, don't use one of those uh, highlighters that, that's real juicy, okay? Because it's going to leak through, and you'll look through your Bible, and it will have leaked through the page, and you'll go to the wrong page, and you'll think, why did I highlight this? They make pencils, colored pencils that are softer than art pencils that are designed for you to highlight in your Bible without leaking through to the other side of that very thin paper. So invest in one of those. I used to be able to tell you to go to, uh, to, to Lifeway or somewhere like that. Well, those brick and mortar stores have gone. Go to Amazon, buy you a set of those pencils, underline things that you don't understand or, or things that you have questions about. Read it through the third time and the third time you read it through, ask someone who is senior to you in the faith to allow you to bounce questions off them off of them go through and with a pad and a pencil write down questions that you have if you really put your nose to the grindstone you really get into this this should take you about three weeks if you're like me and you're a slow reader it might take you three months but the deal is we are getting back to the point to where we listen to John say to us Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, this is Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what we're gunning for. The very first thing you're going to notice out of the gate with the Gospel of John is that John does exactly what Moses did when he wrote the first five books of the Bible. He starts with the beginning. The Gospel of John starts the same way the book of Genesis starts, in the beginning. John says, in the beginning was the Word. And then he makes that statement and spends the next few chapters explaining who the Word is. And one of the most powerful ways he does that is, is what we're about to share together. This is John chapter 1, and we're picking up reading in verse 9. And we're going to read down through verse 18. 
we're going to be reminded of some very important things about the truth of who Jesus is. And we're going to spend just a couple of moments talking about what John shows us here. And then we're going to come to the communion table. John chapter 1, verse 9, starts out like this. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. But the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Now I want to do something here. I'm going to read verses 14 and 16 together. I'm going to take out verse 15. Verse 15 is an afterthought. Verse 15, verse 15 is a, a thought that John put in this gospel to help clarify things. I want you to listen to verses 14 and 16 together. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. Out of his fullness, we have received grace in place of grace already given. The two verses are linked together by the idea of fullness. Those two words are linked together by the idea of, of what it means to be filled, what it means to be full. John goes on and says, hey, Moses gave us the law, but Jesus came and gave us this idea of grace and truth together. Very simply and very succinctly, this is what he means. The law came into the world so that we could look at ourselves and others and know they were sinners. That's essentially what the law did. The law came into this world so that you and me together would be able to look at ourselves, judge ourselves based on how we stacked up to the law, and know that in all things, we never made the cut. And we had to rely on burnt offerings to set us right with the law. Jesus came into the world so that we could know that though God was graceful to us with the outpouring, the coming of the law, a different kind of grace was upon us now. A grace that helps us not only to know and understand that we should continue to press on toward the mark, but that through his son Jesus Christ, we were going to be made good by substitution. We're never going to measure up to the law. That grace that God set up for us in the Old Testament, we're never going to be able to meet that. That's why Jesus said, I'm not come to abolish the law. That's what people thought. People thought that Jesus came into the world to speak against the law and, and to undermine the Jewish faith of the time. He said, no, that's not what I've come to do at all. I've not come to abolish this law. I've come to fulfill this law. I've come to stack it up. I've come to, to make it like a jar, and I'm going to pour myself into it, and the law is going to be fulfilled. And that's good for you, and it's good for me, 
because we could never fill the law ourselves. Gentlemen, this is a football. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, this is our Lord and Savior. The God who created us and then chose to take on our form and come to this place and walk a mile in our shoes so that we might be made right once for all in the eyes of the Father. That no judgment would stand against his shed blood. That when we take on Christ as our Savior, we have within us the law fulfilled, not because of anything that we've done, but because of everything that he has done. This, this is the God we serve. This, this is the God of the second chance. This is the God that Jonah knew. This is the God that Moses knew. This is the God that Paul knew. And this is the God that we worship, who is alive and who is with us today. In the beginning was the Word. Jesus knew and understood that what he was dropping on this world and, and what he was dropping particularly on his disciples was very difficult for people to understand. He knew without a doubt that what he was sharing with his disciples and what he was sharing with the world at the time was very hard for people to know and, and people to understand. Even though he showed them on countless occasions who he was through miracles, through teaching, he knew there was a barrier. And I like to think, unsupported by scripture, that his love led him to give us a very, very simple yet complex example that has become uh, for us in the United Methodist Church one of our sacraments. We have two sacraments in the United Methodist Church, two holy services that we observe on a regular basis in the United Methodist Church that keep us connected. Means of grace, John Wesley called them. They are the act of baptism and the act of the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. That pours out of Jesus' desire to give that concrete example to his disciples of A, who he was, B, what he was about to do, and C, what would come from it. A, he was God himself, the Son of God. B, he was about to literally sacrifice himself and see what would come from it would be the internalization of the truth of who he was so that we might have life. Those three things are reflected critically within the communion table, within the act of taking Holy Communion, the broken body and the spilled blood, the idea that a sacrifice would be made for us and the idea that we come from this table internalizing the truth of who God is and drawing energy from that that we may step into the world and be that very presence. That, that's part of our communion liturgy, right? That we may go into the world and, and be, be the body and the blood of Christ. That's our desire. So he called his disciples together as they came into Jerusalem and he told them uh, we're going to celebrate the Passover and he had told them once again I'm going to be betrayed into the hands of men and he said you go in you go ahead of me you find these particular things and you set up a place for us to celebrate the Passover meal together and that's what they did and as they came together and they celebrated with uh, the Passover, with uh, the sharing of the Seder meal, Jesus did something entirely different at the end of that meal. 
Now, you have the elements that are going to be represented here today. This is the last time, hopefully, we pray, that we will celebrate communion in our pews. We are praying that from February forward, we will be back at this altar taking communion together or taking communion by intention and leaving the altar open so that you can come and pray here. Intention, that's when you get the bread and you dip it in the juice and you take it and you come and you kneel and you pray. We are praying that beginning in February, that's going to become our norm again. But we're going to remain flexible. We're going to do what we need to do to take care of ourselves, take care of each other, and continue to worship. In this act today, you have received your communion elements. Just hang on to those. And I'll tell you when to partake in just a few moments. What those elements represent, though, is what Jesus did at the end of that supper. He didn't stop. He started. He took a loaf of bread. He lifted the bread and broke it. And he asked the Lord to bless it. Then he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. So they did. He wasn't done. He took a cup of wine. He lifted it. He asked the Lord to bless it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And that's what we come together today to commemorate. We come together today to be reminded of the essential identity of Jesus Christ. God himself incarnate on this earth. We come together on this first Sunday of the new year to know and to understand once again the depth of love that our Creator has for us. And we do this through celebrating communion together. Bow with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, these elements are before us. They are representative of um, that first Passover meal that drew to a close with the celebration of this act. This is our communion with you. We don't worry about our faith tradition here because this is not uh, our table, it is yours. We don't worry how we label ourselves as Christ followers here because this is your table. We answer simply these three questions with yes or no answers. Do I love the Lord? Am I earnestly, truthfully, truly, sincerely sorry for my sin? And do I seek to live at peace with my neighbor? That's the only test we give ourselves, Father. As we take these elements today, let us reflect on those things. Over these elements, Father, I pray now that you would make them be representative of your body and your blood. That as we take them and we move into the world, that we would be Christ representatives, redeemed by his body and by his blood, to continue your work and this, your kingdom that is at hand. And as we celebrate this time together, May you be glorified. May we be revived. We pray this earnestly and sincerely with great faith. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Jesus, Jesus told his disciples, I say to you, this is his body broken for you. Now take and eat. And just as Jesus told his disciples, he passed the cup and said, drink from this, all of you.
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now take and drink. Let us pray. In this taking, Father, may we know revival. In this taking, Heavenly Father, may we know communion, not just with you, but with each other, that we may introduce your communion into this world. Equip us to do this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dex, Dex. I see you got the one that I put the Mad Dog 2020 in. <laughs> I do that every time. I slip some real wine in somewhere. You just had a bone in it, didn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> Amen, brother. And Dex said it'd be his pleasure to come to the altar, and we are absolutely looking forward to that. Taking in a deep breath of new normalcy and starting once again. God is the God of the second chance, and we're eternally thankful for that, and I'm eternally thankful for you. As we close out this morning, this altar is open. If you need to come forward and pray, please feel free to do so.
Happy New Year to you once again, and thank you for starting your year out with us today. Receive this benediction as you depart. Move into the world filled with the communion of the Holy Spirit, moving, loving, doing as he would have you do. May he receive the glory in everything you say and do this year, and in all things, may his life be lived out within this church. Go now in his peace, in the power of of the Holy Spirit, and with the love of Jesus Christ himself guiding you. In his precious name, amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you.